Okay, we can now start the seminars. We are very grateful to God for bringing us together today. Shall we please pray together? Father, we want to say thank you for a day as today, a day you have made to pour showers upon our lives. As we go through this seminar together, pray you by your spirit and grace you direct us. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. I want to welcome all of us to our special, wonderful time in the presence of God, our national celebration service, uh, combined with our global crusade, showers of blessings. This morning, we will take a brief look at a seminar quite important for our homes, and it is titled Money and marriage everyone can you echo it after me money and marriage money and marriage well it's a topic that is not so often discussed but today we're going to look at it together let's go to the book of ecclesiastes chapter number 10 i want us to read from verse number 19 ecclesiastes 10 uh, reading verse 19. Since it's a seminar, sometimes I may ask somebody to read. I would like another person in The Hague, Rotterdam, to also please go to 1 Timothy 6.10. So Ecclesiastes chapter number 10, verse 19. I'll read that from here. We will go to The Hague to get 1 Timothy 6.10. And then we'll combine the two together as we go into our seminar. Ecclesiastes 10, 19. Scripture says, a feast is made for laughter, and wine maketh merry. Can we echo the last part together? Go. But money answereth all things. Let's go to the Hague and take 1 Timothy 6, 10, please. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 10. Yes, please. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some converted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Thank you very much, my brother. It's not a paradox. It's not a contradiction. That first part says money answereth what? All things, which means it's good to have money. Then the second part then says the, root, the love of money is the root of evil. How can money be good at a particular place and at the same time be bad at another place? That's why we need to look at it. The reason is this. Money is like fire. Now, can you imagine a world without fire? There's so little you can do without fire. Is that not so? We cook. Many of the industrial things we have here, they have to use a lot of fire. Without fire, we will, not be we will not be warm. Fire is good. But you can also imagine when fire gets into a, a shop, what it can do to it. So fire can be good and can also be bad. It all depends on how you manage it. So fire not managed well could be destructive. The same with money. If money is not managed well, Instead of thing for us, it could be the source of all problems. And it has unfortunately been a source of problems in many homes. That's why we are looking at it together today. Money and marriage. We want to ensure that you and I will have a home that is void of this stress when it comes to money. Now, let's look at some of the things we'll be talking about today. I don't know if I have control. Yes, good. Now, we'll be looking at three things. Uh, I think I missed one of my slides. I don't know why I'm not getting a good thing over here, but sorry about that. Um, what we are talking about is that there are three things we want to discuss here. First is that 
what is the premise? Uh, maybe we you didn't get the right slides um, uh, because what you are showing is not right. I will take it from here, brother. We are going to discuss the premise, so what it means, uh, and then we will continue with the principle, what principle should guide us, and then from there we will continue with what we call the practice. How are we going to practice to ensure that our homes, our marriages, are getting the best that they have to be. And I pray that your marriage and my marriage and our home will get the best in the area of marriage in Jesus' name. Now, thank you because I think I have the thing now. Uh, if my brother could go to the next one. Yes, thank you very much. Now, I go with the first one, which is the premise. Now, if you talk of a premise, a premise means what is the basis? Now, before we can understand what we need to do, before we can understand this issue of money, let's understand marriage in itself. Because why money has become an issue in marriage is because we have not understood the basic principle of marriage. So let's go to Genesis. This time I'll go to Amsterdam, please. Um, somebody in Amsterdam, please help me read Genesis. You're going to look at chapter number two from verse 20 to 25. Genesis 2, 20 to 25. Can I get a reader from Amsterdam, please? The fowl of the ear and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not fun and help made for him. And the Lord caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs, and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib, which the Lord God had taken from man, made he a woman, and brought her unto the man. Please to 25. Okay. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones, and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. Thank you very much, my sister. God bless you. This is the basis. This is the foundation where it started. It started from this principle that the Bible says that they are no more to, they became one what? One flesh. And the scripture tells us in verse 25 that they were both naked but they were not ashamed. This can only happen in marriage. That two people can be naked and not ashamed. It's only in marriage it can happen. So that tells us that we need to get the best in this area of marriage. For our young people, please don't miss the single source. It's also for you. So what we want to share here is that what is the premise? The premise is this, applying the principle of marriage. Now, first, the premise. Let's go back to the verse number 22. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, made he a woman and brought her unto the man. God created the man and God created who? The woman two individual people, two separate people having different identities. Is that okay? So that is what we are looking at here, that they were separate, but they were together. And this is where we want to first underline the first point is that let's acknowledge that our partners are different. Amen. This is where it starts, that we are originally different. God did not create another Adam. Amen. He didn't create a copy of Adam. God created Adam and Eve. They have their own ways, their own way of thinking. Two different people created, yet they were created just as God wanted them to be in the image of God. So where we miss this principle that my partner is different from me, but 
they are different in different ways and that ways that make them different is good for us together to be connected so adam acknowledged eve as separate complete equal and independent very important about that because sometimes we might have a, a situation whereby the man is so dominant that it makes the woman feel less important the reverse could also be the case whereby you can have another toucher in the house that the man is almost re not recognized. And this is where we want to emphasize. The basis is that different but complementary. So acknowledge your partner's individuality. The second part is that they were one. Amen. They were one. Look at verse 24. Therefore shall a man leave his father and mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. Sometimes we are so connected to our village. You know the village. That the people in our village have more influence than our marriage. If we are one, say they are one flesh. They are not separate people, one flesh. That is one thing. So my, I am not different. My husband is not different from me. I'm not different from my husband. So what happened? Uh, my wife and my I, we are the same. My husband and I, we are the same. We are one. They are one flesh. Very important. The man should leave parents. The woman should also leave that and cleave together. If this marriage is going to work, this principle is so important. One flesh. One flesh. The last, the third one is openness. The last part in verse 25 says, and they were both naked, the man and the wife, and they were not ashamed. Everything was open. Why is this a problem? It's a problem. Why is marriage an issue? It's a problem because these three principles are not there originality that we are unique people oneness yet we are together as one and openness nothing hidden i pray we will work with this principle with these premises in jesus name now if we are one if we are open if we are originally created different then what should be the principle that should guide our marriage and how it should affect our finances that's what we want to um, look at how then do we move from the fact that if I am married, I'm no more an individual separate. I am an individual yet connected to my partner to become one flesh. Now, what principle should guide us? Now, the principle is this. One policy, one plan, one purse. Can we echo that? Go. Can we say it again, please? What it means is that we work with the same mind, with the same heart, with the same goal. Let's start with the policy. Now, what do we mean by a policy? A policy simply means that something, an agreement. So we have practical decisions together, one policy. The family has an agreement. So it's about maybe how we plan, clothing, our feeding, food, helping, lending, borrowing, sponsoring, educate, everything about the house. What policy are we going to have? How do we invest money? What are we going to do for the children? Where should the sports of the children be? How should we as partners work together to achieve the best for ourselves? We have a policy for ourselves. Where the man has his own and the woman has her own, he said, well, that is for you, and this one is for me, then it is no more one. So now, the key thing is, remember that we are individuals, but we are together. So um, both becoming one. Now watch this word, both. So here are things I would like to put, sorry, so quick, put on the screen so that we can share together. The principle is that we are all accountable to each other. We respect one another and we have compassion for one another. Amen. The husband is accountable to the wife and the wife is accountable to the husband. We respect one another. Sometimes this is almost lost in marriages. The, the longer we stay together, the respect begins to uh, fizzle out. But that should be the reverse, respect. And we have compassion. What it means is that if my wife is suffering. It's not that, sister, you're on your own. Or if my husband is not having it good, is that, bro, the Lord will help you. 
No, we have compassion. And I pray we will understand. How do we work? Will this be effective? We use the AHA method. And three things. One is acknowledge, harmonize, and adjust. Just for the sake of those joining, we have split the seminar into two. So our single brothers, you go to the conference room. So our ushers, please um, do the job. And our married brethren will stay in this uh, room so that we share together. Now, let's go to that first part. So acknowledge. Acknowledge that we both have different needs. This is where it gets interesting. Let's acknowledge it. The needs of men and the needs of women are all different. Is that not so? Sisters, is that not so? Brothers, is that not so? So when you go to a house, the biggest red group belongs to the men. Uh -huh. the, the, our, our wonderful sisters are smiling. The, 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 yeah, because we have different needs. For men, they can maybe have four or five shoes and they say, ah, this is enough. But you know, four or five shoes, <laughs> in some contests, they are not enough. <laughs> Amen. Uh, so then you begin to wonder, but this is not, it's not enough. We all have different world needs. That's number one. And we have priorities. So what we need to do is that we have to adjust, redesign. You may not be able to meet each other, all the needs. So we have to re uh, redesign our needs. We both have to make practical concession. I would have loved to be in Johannesburg, but the money is not enough. So instead of going to Johannesburg, let's go to Barcelona. It's just close by. Amen. Now let's adjust and make practical concession. Adjust. We both take the time to learn till we converge. Marriage is a learning process. It is not going to be something like this. We have to learn from one another. So that should help us in the policy, the aha. Acknowledge that we are different. Let's harmonize. We all have different things, but we cannot do all. And let's adjust where necessary. Amen. Then if we have that plan, that kind of principle or that kind of policy, what should be the plan behind it? What kind of plan should we have? Now, this plan is very important. So now I would like to just say that the key thing is the policy we have, let's translate it to a plan. And here we are looking at financial plan. Um, we make plans because we cannot meet all needs. If you have unlimited money, but there's no need to plan, you understand? You just, anything you want, just buy. But, but God is so wise that he didn't make it like that for man. Otherwise, you also be wasteful. So we need to plan. How do we make this kind of planning? So we have seen the AHA method where you acknowledge that we have different needs. We harmonize together and we now adjust so that we can all work together. Then how do we make the plan work? Now we translate this policy into financial picture. Okay. In the next three, four years, where do we want to be? What do we want to do next year? What, how do we, everything we do, we are in a house, we have rented the house or bought the house. It costs something. How do we make a plan to adjust this? Now, we, talk, we saw the aha one. So we go to the next one is, oh, yes. Now we need to make it happen. Amen. It's not just to say, aha, this is good. But from aha, it moves to what? Yes. Oh, yes. It's coming. It's coming home. We can do it. So how do we try? How do we do it? Now, we have to make an agenda. How are we going one agenda? How are we going to get it done? And this is where it gets interesting. I want to have a big car, but my other partner want to have a big kitchen. Okay, car and kitchen, which one should come first? If I ask the men, car and kitchen, which one comes first? Can you tell me, man? <laughs> Ah, the men are saying kitchen. Clap for yourself. Sisters, car and kitchen. Which one comes first? Ah, so the kitchen has won. Now, that is what I mean. So you have to get a plan. So every, we have to analyze. Okay, we will start with this. We will move to that. So let's look at the year. Accounts for changing income, needs, and wealth aspirations. So we want to see, okay, our income strategy for next year, how is it going to change? If it's going to change, what kind of things should we also change along? So one agenda, we have a plan for ourselves, look at the year 
exercise, work with it, respect and obey. So we have the plan and it's okay. We started this, what we want to do. And somewhere along the middle, we said, well, sister, I was thinking it was the kitchen, but now I have seen one Jaguar. No, no kitchen. Let's go to Jaguar. What do you think will happen along the line? So let's work with it. If you have a plan, let's go alongside with it. Amen. Then service. Be flexible to handle unforeseen things. It is said that no matter how good you make a plan, not everything you can see. So sometimes along the line, we should be flexible. Say, okay, when we started the year, we didn't know this was what we thought we could do. But along the line, we have seen that the other option is better. Let's change it. Ah, no, that's not what we promised. So if you're a man of God, when you say something, you should do it. Oh, and that's not what God says. So no, we should be flexible that if things have to change for the better, we should be able to do that. Amen. Amen. Am I having my audience here? Great. God bless you. So do we have the OAS now? So from aha, we have made it work. Okay, now where do we go again? So one plan. So now one policy, one plan. But all these are just words. What do we need now? Action. So, so let the more disciplined, this is very important. Let the more disciplined partner manage while the weaker complies. Sometimes the men are very good managing resources. Sometimes they are not so good. Uh, so the one who can manage it well. Let that person take control. And that's why I'm coming to the pair because you will understand why it is so. One purse. What does one purse mean? One purse doesn't mean that, um, um, okay, I have one account and everybody comes in. No, that's not what we mean. What we mean is that whatever I have, whatever my partner has, they are all together as one. If I bought a car, it is not I, it is what? we so what we are saying it is not mine this is mine and this is yours so sometimes the woman is having her project and the man is having his project so we are having our, our, everybody is having their project that is not what it means what it means is that whether i do or you do it is for our collective good and i want us to read something here because this is very crucial if you understand this that the purse if you understand this principle it will help us but sometimes some men are afraid well if my wife knows what i am having and getting well she'll make too many demands that i'll go bankrupt so then woman stay away man stay so that has kept us away but if you have a different principle that if i waste the money it's going to go against us then we will think differently amen ephesians chapter 5 verse 25 i'll read that quickly from here and i would like a sister or a brother in Eindhoven also to read proverbs 31 10 to 12 let a sister read that for me proverbs 31 10 to 12 i'll read for the brothers and I want the sister to please get the microphone, read Proverbs 31, 10 to 12. Let's go to Ephesians 5. I read verse 25. Scripture says, husbands, love your wife. Even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Verse 28 says, so ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. The last part is so beautiful. He that loveth his wife, he that loveth his wife, loveth himself. Man, that is the principle. Sometimes we think, oh, that is the woman. Let me do something. She doesn't need to know I'm clever. No. If you are doing something in financial terms, we don't include our wife. We are hurting our own selves. Now, sisters, what can we then do? Proverbs 31, 10 to 12. Can you read that, please? Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. The art of her husband doth safely trust in her, so that he shall have no need of spoil. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. She seeketh wood and Thank flies. you very much to 12. Uh, can we all read the 12 together? One to go. She will do him good and not evil. How long? All the days. That's where it works together. So money, the way I spend money, the way my, hu my husband has to bring the money in, the woman can also bring the money in. The principle is that it is ours. We work together. I want to do good to the family. The man has to do good to the family. When we work on that, we're going to have what is called the three T's. So we did the aha, uh -huh, and we went to the 
oh yes and now we are going to make it happen let's go to the three t's first one is the truth let's be truthful about money what we earn how we spend let's be truthful because one thing that destroys marriage is when truth is missing truth 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 put all together this is the truth second trust let's trust our partners it's, ah, it's my, this is my husband i'm not sure this is my wife i'm not sure so we want to really go into it to look into their secret and try to check their phones and check what, what are they really doing when trust is not there it kills the family the third one is war transparency how wonderful it would be that the man knows after 10 years that the wife has actually built a house in Kumasi and the man had no idea. It might sound funny, but it is happening. How money gets to the village and the wife doesn't know. But the wife, if she asks for money, yeah, there's no money, there's nothing. But the man has been able to get a mansion in the village and the woman has no idea that's not transparency it is those kind of issues that bring stress to the family and then you see that instead of us becoming one flesh together we are not brethren that's why i read money answereth all things but the love of money can be the root of oil if you have seen many families stretch and broken up sometimes the core problems come from money so I pray by the grace of God from today, whatever we do with our money should be for the collective world benefit. Amen. Amen. Whatever I do with my money should be for the collective benefit of the family. Whatever my partner does with the money should be for the collective benefit of the family. This is the principle, the truth, everything naked before us. Trust one another and let's be transparent about it. Now, before we round up, I want to just share with you, how then do we make a practical thing, a practice? How do we practically get this done? I will just share with you, if we have several needs, what should we do? This doesn't matter whether we earn a thousand or two thousand or three thousand or four thousand. Money is said that if you don't plan it well, it can always create problems and issues. So now, let's go there. Now, tips on budgeting. How are you going to do? Budget captures all your income and depicts all your expenses. You look at it. How, what do we, how, how much are we earning? What is coming in? And what, is the, what are we spending? There are some things that are always there. Can we mention some of them? Some needs are always going to be there. Anybody? What do we always have to pay? Yes. Rent. Food. The Hague. Can you mention some of the things we always have to plan for them? needs from the Hague. My time. The Hague. Oh, the microphone is off. Maybe from Amsterdam, can someone tell us things that we will always have to think about them because we will need to make a location budget for it because we have to pay them. Yes, the Hague, Amsterdam. If you are speaking, your microphone is off, so I cannot hear. Light and water bill. Light, the bills. God bless you. Any other point? Education of the children. Yes? I'm still waiting. All right. So, we are going to do it right. Amen? So, right. The first letter is R, and there is it. Rigid allocation of fixed. So, that's what we said. Your tithes and offering. The housing. If you have a car or mobility, the insurances, the bills we pay, electricity, all these gas, those things are there. You have to pay them. We have to take care of that, number one. There are things that are not going to change because we have to have a place to stay. You have to pay for these bills. So there are rigid things you cannot change. There are others also what we call intelligent allocation. That means that there are others you have to really think about them. Those ones you have a bit of room to operate. Food things you have to buy. If they are buying from uh, maybe one shop and it's too expensive, look for another way you can get almost the same thing at a cheaper price. That's an intelligent way of using money. Then, but the shop is so close to me, but it's costing us too much. So 
right? Allocation of variable expenses so like food, fixtures, have something also for fun, for holidays. Amen. Sometimes maybe you have to go to uh, all you can eat. Eh, it's not every day so that you don't say, you hear what the pastor said. Let's go to all you can eat. No, no, but there should be time for that. Amen. And be, the, the other, the G is generous allocation for investment. Now, please, church, let's understand that sometimes uh, we spend everything we need and we say, well, 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 don't, God will take care of tomorrow. No, let's invest. So as a family, where are we investing? Is it in shares? Is it savings, pension? Those things are crucial. Let's do that. H is for holistic allocation for future. Our sister mentioned it. Our children, the children are growing. They are now young. You think that, oh, they are not there. That let's invest. Save something for the future of the children. If you want to move to a bigger place, expansion. Eh? Let's look at all those things. And finally, tangible allocation for personal needs. Maybe I need something in my, you know, in my, for my personal needs. It's not everything that a wife will go to. Honey, can I get 10? No, there should be something that the wife has to get that she can use freely for herself. The man should have my money to also use freely for himself. Uh, so that it's not every time, I need, I need 10 euros, can I get it? I need 15. Ah, you're always asking money, then give her 100 so that she doesn't ask it again. Amen. Praise the Lord. Sisters, am I speaking your mind? Ah, they said yes. Brothers, am I speaking your mind? And now the response is low. Wow. But the point is this, let's work towards that. Uh, so sometimes let's, so let's make allocation for things we cannot, uh, if we can save something, let's put it there, unbudgeted. You don't know what could happen. So we call it unforeseen. Things you don't know. So please don't eat all the eggs. Sometimes you have to reserve some of the eggs for the chick and the hen, uh, for the hen to also get them done. I pray the Lord will bless us as we do this in Jesus' name. Let's go before God even as we pray. Lord, grant us victory in our homes. Grant us grace, grant us joy, grant us glory. The grace of God will be upon us. The hand of the Lord will be upon us. Money is good. Money is powerful. Let's pray that God will help us. We'll be rich. We'll make it. And we'll use the money effectively to the glory of God. If your home is stressed because of money, the Lord is going to supply. Money answereth all things. But the love of it can be a source of evil. Let's pray that the grace of God will be upon our lives. And the Lord will grant us excellence and victory as we manage money very well in our homes. Let's, it's all about added value. Sisters, the Bible says she will do her, him no good. She will, do, she will not do him evil. She will do him good. What is your added value to the family? Brother, what is your added value to your family? That is what we are talking about. It's not me. All my wife is me and both becoming one. Let's pray so it will be. In Jesus' name, we have prayed.